Dreallday.com. What up, everybody? Dre Baldwin, Dreallday.com. It is Friday, May 22nd, 2015. It's summertime out this bitch. I don't know what it's like where y'all at, but it's summertime where I'm at. I record this every Friday. This is QA. I believe this is QA number 72. Let me check on that. Yes, this is QA number 72 that you are watching, in which I'm going to respond to all the comments and questions from QA 71. So that's how I do this. QA 73 is going to be me responding to all the comments and questions in the comments to this video. So y'all keep good questions coming. I'll keep making these. If the questions get whacked, then this will cease to continue. So let's get right into it without any further ado. Number one question. First question. Jura says, what's the best quote for motivation ever? The best quote for motivation ever is work on your fucking game. The 2K boss says, do you believe that you could beat 50-year-old Michael Jordan in a game of basketball? Yeah, I believe I could beat anybody in the game until or unless they beat me. And then we just had to play again until I win. So, yes. Rondo Style says, when you're looking at professional basketball exposure camps, there's a lot of them in the United States, and they all claim they're going to send out film, have representatives. He said, every camp makes a whole lot of claims. And, yes, they all do make a lot of claims. He says, how do you pick the right camp to attend? How do you tell the good from the bad to avoid wasting money? And how do you avoid ending up at a camp that doesn't have a good competition that will make you look good when you play good against them? Well, Rondo, that's a good question. I actually have covered that in detail. I actually did an eight-part video series a couple years ago explaining the answers to every question that you ask that is on YouTube. And you can also go to my website, dreallday.com, and the guides and tips section of my website. You'll see me talking about that in detail. Next question. 24 Luong says, Dre, I'm in the middle of an ankle injury. What's the best way to heal, recover your ankle? Thanks for everything you've done. I learned a lot of things from you. Keep at it. Well, 24 is another thing you can learn from me. Almost every question I get asked here, I probably already made a video about an ankle. I did post a video about that probably about a week and a half to two weeks ago. So just go look at my channel and you'll see that video. Dante Washington, Jura had asked me a second question. We do one question a piece here. We got to keep it fair so I can address as many people as possible. So if you got more than one question, pick which one is better. Dante says, Dre, I don't know if anybody asked this, but what is your drive? What's your motivation to get up every morning and do what you do? Yes, Dante, someone has asked me that. A lot of people have asked me that. I made several videos about that. I've written about it a lot, and I actually just did another video about it about maybe three weeks ago and the title is what's your drive what makes you keep going so go look up that video and you'll see my answer ycdm had asked me is training on a hoop that's higher than 10 feet good i'm really focusing on my range and my aim and i don't know why i responded to it because i usually don't respond to the q a questions until i do the live video but i think i just didn't know it was a q a question so i told him to define to me what he meant by good and that's, there's a good point from that. A lot of people ask me questions. They say, Dre, is it good to do this or is it bad to do that? Or is this better than this? There's no way for me to really quantify what you mean when you say good, better, bad. So you have to tell me exactly what you mean. If somebody says, is it good to practice on a hoop that's this height? What do you mean by good? So I told him to define it. So any of you ask me a question that says, is this good or is this bad? Give me some more information as to what exactly you mean by good or bad so I can give you a better answer than define what you mean because that's all I'm going to tell you until you tell me the definition I can't answer so he says will it ruin his aim on a normal 10 foot court because he's getting used to the higher one or will it build up more range for him on the normal one well why CDM I can't really say what practicing is going to do for you I know practicing will make a player better but if you're practicing on a court that's not the normal not the size of a court that you're going to play on in the game then you're not practicing for the game that in my opinion I've never really heard of anyone practicing on a basket that's not a normal 10 feet as a, a training method. Maybe, hey, maybe you stumbled upon something brand new. You might be the pioneer of this. Raise the basket a little bit higher than 10 feet or way higher than 10 feet and it makes you better. You might have stumbled upon something brand new, so I don't know. Generally, I would say practice on a basket that is 10 feet. Now, if all you have is a basket that is higher than 10 feet or lower than 10 feet, then it doesn't matter, does it? If it's going to mess you up or make you worse or whatever, does it really matter? What other option do you have? If that's the only basket you have, then practice on it. Now, if you have other choices, then go find a 10-foot court. Next. Yasin Kip says, Dre, do you recommend anything 
that is going to help him read a defender or exploit his stance on offense. And his guess is that I'm going to tell him to keep on playing basketball. Well, of course, you should keep playing basketball. But the only thing that's going to help you read a defender, I mean, I don't under, I, re I really don't understand the question because the answer is within the question. If you want to read a defender, then read the defender. When you had a ball in the game, defenders in front of you, you read them and you react to what you're seeing in front of you. So I don't know what other information you need besides just do it. You already said what it is you want to do. So what's stopping you from doing it? Next, Sadiq says, I'm from Germany. What do you think is the best way to get me into a Division I college when I finish with school? I'm in the 10th grade. The best way to get you into a Division I college when you're finished with school is to apply to college and get accepted. I don't think there is any other way. Riley Meller says, I'm right-handed. I do layups on my right. I dribble and pass on my right. And he's very good with his right hand. He says, but for some weird reason, he shoots with his left hand. He's 13 and wondering if he's just switched to his right because he does everything with his right hand in basketball and it has improved his right hand. So should he switch to his right hand? Well, Riley, are you a good shooter when you're shooting with your left hand? If you're a pretty good shooter, then maybe you can keep shooting with your left. Maybe you can develop your right hand at the same time. Maybe you'll have both as a skill. But unless there's a real reason and the left hand is not getting you the results you want, then I don't see why you would switch just to do it. If you see an advantage, a competitive advantage that will make you a better player, then do it. You won't even have to ask anybody because that just makes sense. But if there's no real reason, then I don't see why you would need to switch. Dream Killer says, have you thought about what you're going to do with your YouTube channel and your business when your playing days are over? Well, the thing with this YouTube channel is, Dream Killer, I have so many videos recorded that y'all haven't even seen yet that... 50 years from now, somebody's going to be thinking that I play basketball because I'm still going to be putting out videos. That's how much content I have that I haven't even put out yet. So that's not going to be a problem. And as far as business, I mean, business is business. They don't have nothing to do with playing basketball. I got, I'm involved in a business that has nothing to do with basketball. So when my playing days are over, then that means I'm just going to do more business because then I don't have so much focus on basketball. So it actually be a good thing. Trey Slays says, do you have any tips on gaining weight for muscle purposes? Yes, eat more and lift heavy weights. Ninja Video says, if your homie roasts you in front of your entire crew, how would you conduct yourself? I guess roast is slang for like telling jokes about you or trying to clown you. We could say clown you or try to tell jokes about you in front of people. How would I conduct myself? Well, it depends on the situation. That's really hard for me to just say what I would do. Everything is based on the situation. Who's the person? What did they say? Who's around? How did they say it? How am I feeling at the moment? So there's a million different things that could happen. I can't really answer that question because it really just depends on everything going on in the situation and I respond in a moment. Casey Murphy says, you ever got a, if you got a sponsorship offer from Nike, Adidas, Jordan, and Under Armour, at the same time, for the exact same amount of money, which company would I pick? Well, it depends on, it's not, it's not all about the money. So if Casey, if all four of those companies offer me the exact same amount of money, I would see what else is going into the sponsorship, because the sponsorship is more than money. Is branding, is promotion, is how they're going to help my business, how they're going to help my name, what are the things they would expect from me, what are the things I should expect from them. All of those things are part of a, an offer that don't have anything to do with the actual dollar amount. So all of those things will factor in. So it's not about me picking my favorite brand. I'm going to pick the brand that's going to be the best for me. It's not about them. It's about me. If they're offering me the sponsorship, then I'm the prize. They're not the prize. I am. Mr. Underdog says, do you have a favorite motivational quote? We already answered that. Eric Hasselholm says, Dre, I, how do I prepare my body for a game? Even if I sleep and eat good, I have no energy. Any advice? Well, it depends on how you define good, sleeping and eating good. What exactly are you eating? How are you sleeping? I don't actually need to know that, but it's just a rhetorical thing when you say you do it good, but you have no energy. I don't know. Maybe basketball is not for you. Maybe you're not in shape. Maybe you haven't practiced enough leading up to the game. Because it's just, if I eat a great meal and I get 20 hours and I get, let's say, eight hours of sleep and then I go play in a tennis match, I'm still going to get my ass kicked because I haven't been practicing tennis at all for the last... 30 years and if I'm playing against somebody who's been practicing every day for the last six months or 16 years they should probably kick my ass no matter how much I sleep or how great my meal was before the game so what else are you doing leading up to the game besides sleeping and eating are you practicing can you play 
Are you in shape? Those might have something to do with the fact that you don't have any energy. Stephen B says, what is more important, the coach, the starters, or the bench? Everything's important. Everything is part of the team. The team wins a game. Not the coach doesn't win a game, the starters don't win a game, the bench doesn't win a game, everybody, the team wins a game or loses a game. Jared Lopez says, in a one-on-one, -on -one, who I think will win, James Harden or Stephen Curry? A one-on-one -on -one between James Harden and Stephen Curry. If we're playing all one-pointers, then James Harden. If we're playing two-pointers, then Stephen Curry. I'm saying if the three-point line counts as an extra point when you make a shot, then I'll say Stephen Curry just because his ability to make those shots. If every basket is worth one point, then James Harden. And by the way, when I play somebody one-on-one, -on -one, there's no two-pointers. The three-point line is not a factor when you play one-on-one -on -one when I play. Every basket is one point no matter where you make it from. Andrew Smith says, who are some of your favorite YouTubers other than yourself? Uh, the funny thing is I don't actually watch a lot of YouTube videos. Besides when I'm recording my stuff, I don't spend any time on YouTube. The only stuff I watch on YouTube would be like, I watch a lot of business stuff, personal development stuff. Like I'll listen to somebody speak or watch a speech that somebody gave somewhere. Or what else do I watch? Maybe an interview or some entertainer or something like that. Maybe a couple basketball videos I might watch. But there's no like certain channel. I'm like, oh, such and such put out a new video. I got to watch it. I don't watch YouTube at that in, in that capacity. So I don't actually have any favorite YouTubers. <laughs> Tate Bennett says, thanks for answering my question. When you play basketball, do you play better when you're pumped up or relaxed? Well, I could play great in both situations. It depends on why I'm pumped up, why I'm relaxed, who I'm playing against, and the situation. So it's not necessarily a one or the other thing. Cliff Stevens says, do you ever look back and reflect on how much you have accomplished and what you're accomplishing right now? The stuff you're doing is so impressive. What you've been able to do with this channel, I can't imagine what I'd be doing if I ever, if I never searched up spin moves four years ago and stumbled upon your channel, LOL. Thanks for changing my life, by the way, on and off the court. Well, Cliff, I'm honored to hear that. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for sharing that with me. And his question is, do I ever look back and reflect on how much I have accomplished and what I'm accomplishing right now? It's funny that he asked me that because I was doing an interview, a, a textual interview. Somebody had sent me a bunch of questions for their website and I was responding. I responded to their email this morning and they asked me a similar question. So I don't really look back like that and think, wow, like, wow, I've done so much. I don't even look at it like that because there's so much more that I want to do. There's a lot of things that I know I'm going to do that people don't know about because I don't announce my plans. But there's a lot more than I'm going to do that when I look back to this point, I'm going to say I hadn't even did nothing yet. But at the same time, I understand that a lot of people have benefited, gained, learned, been inspired, motivated by the stuff that I put out. So I don't take that lightly. So I'm very appreciative of the fact that of people like Cliff and all the rest of you who share that I've helped them in any way, shape or form. So to answer your question, Mr. Steve Blazer says, what should I do when I'm playing a game? But my shooting isn't going well for me. Should I keep driving or try to shoot my way out of a slump? Well, that's a you could do either one, Steve. It's not really that you should do one or the other. How do you know when your shooting isn't going? Is it after one shot? Is it after five? Is it after 10? Is it after 11? Is it after 20? So there's no way to actually say when, okay, my shot's officially not going in today, so I'm going to not shoot again. It doesn't really work like that. You could go 0 for 12 and then make your next five shots. But if you don't take that 13th shot, you'll never know. You miss 100% of the shots you don't make. That's the cliche, right? So there is no point when your shooting is not going. That's a decision that you have to make. So it's not really for me to tell you, all right, so if you miss two shots, don't shoot again. Or if you miss 20, don't shoot again. You had to decide in the game. There shouldn't be any set point. Like It's not like you say, all right, we got 25 games this season. So any game I play, if I miss three jump shots, I'm not going to shoot anymore. That don't make no sense. Because in that particular game, let's say the third game of the season, after you miss your first five shots, maybe you're wide open at the three-point line at the buzzer and your team's down by two. Are you going to drive or your team's down by three? Are you going to drive to the basket and make a layup? No, that makes no sense. You still got to shoot that three in that situation. That's a rough example. But again, it shouldn't be a set number in your head like, okay, now I'm never going to shoot again. Keep playing. Be, re be instinctive. Play off instinct, not off any memorized ideas of how you had to play basketball. Mateo says, 
when you see someone get broken in a game or dunked on, I guess by broken he means they get crossed over or something, a, a dribbling move on defense. Am I one of the people who gets hyped or do I just go up to the person and say, it's good, let's just keep playing and get this win? And do I think not playing basketball regularly or every other day messes up your shot? Actually, to answer the last question, messes up your shot. How do you define messes up your shot? So you would have to quantify that for me because people use that phrase a lot. There's no, really no way to define what messing up your shot means. For Stephen Curry, messing up a shot might mean he misses 5 out of 50. Or somebody else messing up their shot might mean they miss 40 out of 50. So you had to define what that means. And to answer his other question, when I see somebody get broken or dunked on, do I freak out and get hyped or do I just go up to the person? I guess he means the person who got dunked on. If they're on my team, well, why would I freak out and get hyped if somebody on my team gets dunked on? Of course, I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't get excited because they're on my team. So we just gave up two points. So, of course, I wouldn't get hyped. That doesn't even make sense. I wouldn't go up to them and say anything. I would just keep playing. I wouldn't get hyped and I wouldn't say anything. So the answer to your question is neither. Jack Mano says, what should I be thinking about when I'm playing someone in a competitive game? I know I can win, but I'm pressured. I feel pressured and I feel it makes me play worse. What can I be thinking about to get rid of my pressure and just win the game and play the best that I can? Well, Jack, I can't tell you how to think. I can't put thoughts in your head and tell you, all right, Jack, so if you think about this, you'll play great. And if you think about that, you'll play terrible. If anybody could come up with that, that actually works for everyone, and on a mass level, that person will make a whole lot of money because I'm sure it could be applied to everything, not just basketball. So Jack, I can't tell you how to think. Figuring out your mental game, all you players out there, what makes you tick, what gets you in the right frame of mind to unlock your abilities is not the same for every single person. So what works for me may not necessarily work for you. And what works for you won't work for the next guy and the next guy and the next guy. Each of you have to figure out what works for you mentally when it comes to triggering yourself to perform at your best. And that's part of the, that's part of the mental game. And mental game is just like physical game. You have to work on your game in order to develop the skills. It's not going to just come to you. It's not something somebody's supposed to tell you. It's something you have to practice and figure out so that you have the ability. And if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Next, Mr. Ningo Flo says, do you have tips on being confident in your game on whatever level and how to handle complaining from your teammates? Well, you don't have to handle complaining from teammates. Nobody said you had to respond to it. Complaining is when somebody else is saying something. You don't have to respond when somebody else talks. It's nobody forcing you to do that. As far as being very confident in your game, well, the first thing you can do to be confident is actually have some game because confidence means you have a belief in your ability. So if you actually have no ability, then you have no reason to be confident. So the first thing is you need to have the game. So work on your game. And the second thing is that mental game that I just talked about in the previous question. You have to figure out what are the triggers that allow you because every human being, we all have abilities. We have our abilities. I'm talking on the court or off the court. We have things that we're good at. And all of us know, all of you know what it's like when you're performing at your best and whatever it is that you do or everything that you do. You know how it felt when you were performing at your best, whether you sell memberships at a gym, whether you're a school teacher, whether you're a surgeon general or you're a basketball player. The thing is, when you're not on the right level mentally, when you don't trigger yourself properly on a mental level, you don't unlock all those abilities. And it's all mental. When you are in the right frame of mind mentally, it unlocks all your physical abilities. Now, how many of you have ever performed at anything and you knew you could do a whole lot better? And the reason why, and everybody should be raising their hand, the reason is because for whatever reason, you weren't in the right mental state at that time. And there's three things that meant that manifest your state in the moment. And I got this from Tony Robbins. I didn't make this up. Number one thing is what are you doing with your body, your physiology? How are you sitting? How are you standing? How's your body feeling? Second thing is what are you saying to yourself? What are you thinking? What words are you using? What's going through your mind at this exact moment? And the third thing is what are you focusing on? Because in this in life, if you look around the room, wherever you are right now, if you're outside, there are a million little things you could be paying attention to. But the human brain can only focus on, usually to focus on something well, one thing at a time, right? You try to focus on two, three, more, more things you try to focus on at the same time, the worse your focus gets for each one. So it's physiology, what are you saying to yourself, the words you're using, 
or thinking. And the third one is what are you focusing on? When you get those three aligned in the right way, it unlocks all your abilities physically. Kobe Pearson says, what's your favorite thing about basketball? Favorite thing about basketball is the competition. Sat Dead says, how do you develop excellent court vision as a point guard? Do you have any tips? Well, first of all, you have to define excellent. All you're using these adjectives, good, bad, mess up, excellent. You have to you have to quantify what you mean by that because my level, my definition of excellent is not the same as yours. It's an adjective, so it's, it's an opinion word. It's very subjective. But to improve your court vision, we, we can agree that that's what you mean to make it better. You have to play basketball. You can't develop court vision by playing on court by yourself. You got to go play in a five-on-five game in a live situation, not a simulated one but a live situation, and you have to develop that skill. Those are instincts. You can't get them by, you can't get them in a controlled environment. You have to get them in a live environment by playing as much as possible. So playing as many games as you can, that will help develop your court vision. Play as a point guard so that you have to actually develop it. B-I-G with a gun. It says, what's the best exercise to improve your vertical? I've been jumping rope. Does that improve your vertical? Well, B, what you need to do is watch the videos of my guy Jacob from Jump Manual. He's been talking about, he comes here every once in a while and he puts up, well, he sends it to me and I put up a video where he talks about common questions players ask about vertical jump. And one of them was about jumping rope. About two, maybe three weeks ago, he made a video specifically about does jumping rope help your vertical? So what you need to do, B, is go back and watch that video and then watch all the other videos Jacob has published, or I've published, of Jacob on his channel because we have addressed those. Chandler says, what can I do to finish my drives at the rim when I'm getting contact and when I'm not getting contact? Well, what you can do is practice more, Chandler. And you can get, if you need to work on finishing with contact, get somebody to practice with you and give you the contact at the rim and you finish while they're giving you contact. So that's what you can do. Napkin Nate says, what kind of questions are people asking? LOL. He said, he's surprised I answered some question and it gave him a laugh. I don't know which one he's talking about, but I'm glad I was able to entertain you, Napkin Nate. Ball is my life. Says, when it's, is it true that when a person practices more than another person, will they get better like practice two times a day in bas- in a basketball court, like shooting and dribbling more. Let me reread that question because I'm not sure I got that. It said, is it true that when a person practices more than another person, will they get better? Like, oh, so he's saying if a person practices twice a day, let's say shooting and dribbling, and another person practices once a day, and they just do one or a smaller combination of both, will a person who practices twice as much get better that much better than the person who practices once. Who knows and who cares? That's two different people. So each one of those people, which are these hypothetical people, both of them need to be focused on themselves and not the other guy. So I don't know and I don't even care because I wouldn't be thinking about what anybody else is doing. I'm only one person, I'm not two people. So I can only focus on what I'm doing, not what anybody else is doing. Swaggy Mamba says, when in the next batch of hoop handbooks are gonna be finished? That's a hell of a question, Swaggy, I don't know. I'm working on them, but I'm also working on a bunch of other things at the same time. So let's say I'm aiming for the end of the summer, no later than August 31st. So I'll give you a date. That's the latest they'll come out is August 31st. I give myself a deadline. So I put some pressure on myself to get it done, get a sense of urgency. But I am working on them. They will be here. Just they're not done yet. Robert, Robert or says, Some people ask some really stupid questions. I was dying when you said, I don't need to tell you when to drink water. (laughs) All right, well, I'm glad I was able to entertain you also. Mike Ruthless Beats says, how do you improve your balance? I searched on YouTube to see if you made a video about it, but you don't. Well, balance and what? What kind of balance are you talking about? Like when you stand up on two feet, you can't stand there without falling over. What do you mean by improving your balance? So you had to be a little bit more specific. Sam Andrews says, how do I stay away from bums who don't want to do drills but take up the whole court when I go to the gym? They always want me to play even though even though they know I will beat them every time. How do you stay away from them? What? You don't have to ask how to stay away from somebody. Just stay away from them. So your answer is right there in the question. Drew Andrews says, I know you spend a lot of time developing your mind and body, but do you, do you believe in developing your soul? Sure, I believe in developing my soul too. I don't know exactly what you mean by that. But yes, mind, body, and soul, they're all connected. So when you're developing one, you're actually working on the others at the same time, in my opinion. 
G Dog says, Do you have a plans on doing a QA with Grayson Boucher? Boucher, aka the professor. He says, Why are you? And he asked like six questions, so I'm not answering all these questions. I'm gonna answer the first one. He says, Do I have plans on doing a QA with the professor? I've never met the professor. We never had a never had a conversation, but if the opportunity arises, sure, why not? But I don't have it on my schedule. Next question. Brett Matiusi says, Dre, I'm planning to work on my game every day this summer at the local outdoor court. Do I think two months of practice will make me perform better, a lot better for the upcoming high school basketball season? How the hell would I know, Brett? Why don't you just do it and find out? What kind of question is that? So people ask me questions like this. They say, I'm about to go practice every day for a year. Do you think I'm going to get better? How the hell would I know? Just go do it. If that's what you're going to do, do it. It doesn't matter what I say. You're going to do it anyway, right? So go do it. Next question. <laughs> Brendan Grassman says, Dre, I'm a shooting guard. I'm 14. I'm a decent defender. When I watch players like Tony Allen or Chris Paul play defense, they're really good at stealing and intercepting the ball on a consistent basis. His question is, what are some strategies or techniques or drills to achieve active hands and defend on the level of Tony Allen or other skilled defensive players. Okay, well, first of all, Tony Allen's, it ain't too many Tony Allen's out there. I've only seen one. Now, I do agree that they are very good defensive players. And as far as intercepting the ball on a consistent basis, I'm not sure what you mean by consistent. That's another one of those subjective words. The NBA's leader in steals steals the ball less than three times a game. So you think how many possessions each team has a game and a leader gets three steals? That's not really a lot. I wouldn't call that consistent, but again, it's subjective, so I don't know what you mean when you say the word consistent. As far as active hands, there are drills that people do. I see people use those balls that when it bounces, you never know which direction it's going to go, so it's kind of like your reaction time. Your react, yeah, reaction, having fast hands, catch the ball if it bounces one time. Those I've seen people do drills like that. It's not something that I do. I don't know what Tony Allen or Chris Paul do for their abilities to have quick hands and things like that. But I'm sure you can look up drills as far as quick hands or reaction time. Look up drills like that. I don't think I've done any, I've done some reaction time drills. Me and Maria, my trainer, have done some things like that. So you can see those on my channel. But it might be somebody else out there other than me who's done drills like that, that might be able to help you with that hand quickness. But if you're gonna do it, you gotta make it a consistent, there's that word again, a consistent practice. Not something you could do for a week and then be like, oh well, I did these drills and they didn't work. So you got to make it part of your all all the time routine. I don't know how or when you're going to do that or what it is you're going to do, but if that's really what you want, Tony Allen and Chris Paul didn't become good defenders in a week. They've been doing it for years. I'm talking 10 plus years of practice, not just what you see in the games, but the stuff you don't see. So you got to commit yourself to doing that if you want those results. Next. MHW says, what do I think of D'Angelo Russell in this year's draft? I don't know anything about D'Angelo Russell except that he plays at, I think, Ohio State was his school. Hope I'm right on that. And I'm not sure if he's left-handed or right-handed. I think he might have been left-handed, but I might be wrong on that too. But other than that, I know nothing about him. I know he's projected to be a top five pick, but I can't tell you a damn thing else. Michael Patterson says, do you want to have kids? Mm, maybe. We'll see. It's not much of an answer, is it? Van City Rep says, do I have any other hobbies other than basketball? Of course. Reading, writing, speaking, learning, listening to music, a lot of other stuff too. Ryan Allen says, who's your favorite rap artist? Uh, 50 Cent. Vladimir says, thanks for posting the dynamic warm-up. I've been doing it every day before a workout. I have extra bounce and I feel looser. Keep up with the pro tips. You're welcome, Vladimir. Anthony Titus says, do you meal prep for the week? And if you do, can you do a video on what you prepare and eat for that week? Well, I've done a bunch of diet and nutrition videos, Anthony, so I actually have done that, but I don't meal prep. I don't meal prep because I actually buy my meals from a delivery service, so I pay them a certain amount of money every week, and they deliver meals to my house like two or three times a week. They deliver meals like in a freezer bag, and then I take them out, and I put them in the refrigerator, and then when I'm ready to eat, I take one meal out, put it in a, a Pyrex pan or something, heat it up, and then I eat it. So I don't actually prep anything. Well, I guess if you want to call that prep, I just heat it up. So I don't do any cooking or anything like that. I just pay that company. They make the food. They deliver it to me. I heat it up, and I eat it. Daniel B. says, I know you may have answered this a lot, but 
can I do the jump manual during basketball season? Can he do the jump manual during the basketball season, the night before games and stuff like that? Sure you can. If you have the jump manual, you should actually read the program where Jacob explains in detail exactly what you can and can't do and what are the best practices in order to get the best results. So Jacob has written up on that. So if you had a program, read it and he gives you that information. So it's better to get it from him than get it from me because he wrote the program, right? Next question, Joe Baldwin says, I'm in Miami between the 26th of June and the 6th of July. Would I be down to play once? Uh, probably not, Joe, but I appreciate the offer. But you will enjoy Miami anyway, so have fun. Next, Javier S. says, do you think you're better than at least one NBA player in the league today? I don't know. I would have to play against that player to determine that. I wouldn't say it just by me sitting here and them being wherever they are. We would have to play a game, and I could say after the game. James Russell says, I know I have the performance capabilities of playing college basketball, but my grades are terrible. I'm a sophomore. I'll be a junior next year playing varsity. Freshman year, I had a 2.0 grade point average, and right now I'm a sophomore and I have a 2.3. Will my grades be good enough to play college basketball? Well, James, that depends on what school you go to because each school has their own guidelines. For instance, if you want to go to Stanford or Harvard, their, their uh, standards are higher than somewhere like Florida State or Florida or Penn State or Texas. So it depends on the school you go to. Whichever school you go to, you can go to their website, and this is all public information, and you can look up what are their standards for student athletes, and also contact their coaches, because sometimes coaches make their own standards. When I was in college, our coach, we had a certain standard at our school of what you had to have minimum to play sports, but our coach actually had his own, which was a little bit higher. He was like, I know the school standard is this, but if you're going to play on my team, the standard is this. So you need to find out from that specific school what school you could play for and maybe if the coach has his own standard, what you would have to do because a lot of coaches do that. Cameron Johnson says, what's your favorite motivational quote? The same question three people asked in the same video, so I've already answered that. Cole Rhea says, I had two quick questions. How do I practice game shots at game speed? I have trouble making shots in the game when I'm practicing, I, but when, when I'm practicing, I can't miss. Do I have any drills for this? Well, first of all, what do you consider to be game speed, Cole? So I can't really tell you how to practice at game speed until you tell me what game speed means. It's great that you ask that because a lot of people think game speed means it goes as fat, go as fast as you possibly can. When you're playing a game, are you sprinting the entire time? And this is not just Cole, but everybody. No, you're not. In basketball, what do you do? You sprint, you run, you jog, you stand still, sometimes you walk. Sometimes you're sliding side to side. Sometimes you're shifting. Sometimes you're bouncing on your toes. Sometimes you're running at 40%. Sometimes 80%. Sometimes 95%. So game speed does not mean go as fast as you possibly can all the time. Because no basketball player, I watch basketball a lot, and I'm sure y'all do. You see basketball players walking. You see them jogging. You see them sprinting. You see them running. So there is no such thing as game speed, in my opinion. I mean, there is a such thing as game speed, but it's not what most people think it is. It doesn't mean just go as fast as you can the whole time. That's not game speed because nobody does that in the actual game. Next question. And he said his ankle has been hurting when he jumps and runs and it limits him. It's been like this for six months. What do I think happened or what is this? Cole, I have no idea. I'm not a doctor. You would need to go see one if you want an answer. JR The Truth says, am I married or do I have kids? No and no. Dylan Moon says, I got the ultimate athlete and Steph Curry who pan book. When I have finished the programs, I want to get Russell Westbrook, but how often do I keep doing Steph Curry? I don't want to just move on to Russell and not do any of the Steph Curry. Well, you can mix them into each other. They're both 30-day programs, so you can make it a 60-day program and just do Russell one day, Steph the next day, Russell one day, Steph the next day. And if any of you who haven't tried a signature workout program from hoophandbook.com yet, they are all structured. So it tells you exactly what to do and which day to do it. So all you got to do is do week one day one then go to the other program week one day one week one day two week one day two and you it'll take you through the entire four weeks of each program clinton bear says how do i balance working on different parts of my game like shooting ball handling etc just do it your question contains the answer balance them you know what balance means obviously since you're using the word so just balance them out i don't understand what you need me to tell you when you already know what balancing is you know what you want to do so do it Johnny Football, last question, says, I play a lot of one-on-one, -on -one and I can usually drive on a guy and beat him, but I always forget 
to deal with my back foot so he can ride my hip. I think he means seal with his back foot. What are some good finishes that I can use? In every Q&A, I say, he's telling me that I say that I can't write a book on what to do and when, but can I give him a few ones that will work? I really appreciate what you do. So Johnny basically said he's having a specific game situation challenge that is causing him to not get the result he wants. And he knows that I always tell people, I can't tell you specifically what to do in one situation because the game doesn't work that way. But despite all this, Dre, I want you to just do it for me. So Johnny, the answer is no, I can't do that for you. I can't tell you exactly what to do because if I tell you what to do one time for this specific game situation and it works, you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna try to do it again the next time and it's not gonna work. And then you're gonna try to do it against another player in a different game and it's not gonna work. And then we know what you're gonna do? You're gonna come back to the Q&A and say, well, all right, that worked, but now this is the situation. Can you tell me what to do for this one? And then the next million times something doesn't work, you're gonna come to me. That's not how the game works. If you or any other basketball player, Johnny, is asking the question, this is what's happening in the game and I'm not getting the result. What should I do in this situation? You are not practicing enough. You are not playing enough. You need to keep practicing and playing more. And I know I say I use that answer a lot and some people might think it's a cop out like to not answer the question, but y'all have to understand that that's how the game works. The game does not work as in, all right, if this happens in the game, do this move. And if this happens, do this move. And if the defender is this tall, do this. And if the defender does this, then you do this. And if the defender tries this move, this is where you should move. And if the defender's foot is right here, you got to do this move, then this move, and then shoot it this way. That's not how the game works. Because you can't memorize all that stuff. And even if you could, you know what? You can't think as fast as the game happens. Your mind has to find the thought, find the thing that has to remember, and then tell your body to do it. By the time you figure all that out, the game has already moved. So you have to be able to react instinctively. And if you're not doing that for whatever reason, any of you players out there you need to work on your game more. That's it. Those are all the questions, everyone. Thank you for coming through this week. You got more questions, leave them in the comments of this video. We limit it to one question per person. Don't give me an essay question with 10 different questions all in one. I'm not answering them all. I'm going to answer your first one. That's it. That's all. Work on your fucking game. That's my favorite motivational quote. Dre all day. Dot. Com. Thanks for checking out this video. Make sure you follow all my top content up here. Follow me on all your favorite social networks right over here. And make sure you are subscribed to catch all the new content I put on on this channel every single day.